Surrender, Steps 1, 2, and 3. Our habit brought us into SA, but it was working Steps 1, 2, and 3 that brought us into the program. There is a difference. Until we actually experienced these first three steps, we would never enter the liberating reality of the Twelve. These three were the archway through which we left the old life behind and entered the new life of sobriety and inner peace. They deal with deflation and surrender. The way up is down. Our way of life brought us to the admission of powerlessness, step one. Without that we could not see our great need. But the feeling of powerlessness without surrender left us with no real hope. As we saw that others had made this great transition, had been sustained, and were now on the freedom road, we gained belief that restoration and new life were possible for us too. We came to believe, step two. But even this fell short until we completed this threefold attitude change by giving up to God, step three. Our habit cut us down. Seeing sobriety and the life of God in others gave us the hope. But our own surrender to God brought the connection that finally worked and kept on working. At first, the group or sponsor often became the higher power, since we had left the true God far behind. But if we stayed in that interim condition, it was dangerous, like a car stuck on high center spinning its wheels and going nowhere. Our own experience taught us that the sooner our surrender was to God, however we understood or did not understand Him, the sooner we made the transition from self to life. I couldn't just surrender my lusts, I had to surrender me. A change of heart. Steps 1, 2, and 3 describe the change of heart from self to God, without which no real change in our lives can come about. There seems to be no such thing as surrender in the abstract. Surrender is a giving up of something specific. Of course, we all had to give up the right to think and practice our habits. What we didn't realize was that we come to this crossroads burdened with a load of other negative attitudes. We found that if we tried surrendering our lust while holding on to our resentment, anger, pride, or dependency, for example, it didn't work. These other passions were often manifested in our attitudes toward parents, authority figures, spouses, or other SA members. For example, one woman discovered that surrender included giving up her right to be nasty to her husband. And one man had to give up emotionally brutalizing his wife and children. Another, who wanted to give up street sex but still have a relationship, discovered he was counting on the relationship to save him from his promiscuity and that surrendering lust has to be all or nothing. And when it came to the marriage bed, many of us discovered it was the last refuge of lust and that here too surrender was the only way. When we finally came to the moment of truth, whatever it was or however slowly we came to it, surrender had to be unconditional. Surrender as an attitude becomes the key to the spiritual program and the summary of its very essence. Once this initial turnaround is made, it gives us faith in the surrender process. At each subsequent stage, there will be a sticking point where a specific attitude or action will have to be acknowledged and dropped before we can be comfortable again. Surrender is not only the key to the 12-step program and sexual sobriety, but to a joyous and purposeful life with others. The surrender required in steps 1, 2, and 3 became the fountainhead out of which all things flowed in practicing the other steps. Because of this attitude change, we would later be able to look at ourselves honestly for what we were and confess it to another, 4 and 5. We would be able to acknowledge and unclench our other defects as they became apparent, 6 and 7. Without such a surrender, we would never think of taking steps 8, 9, and 10 to begin righting the wrongs to others. And without it, we would be unable to have any conscious union with God in prayer and meditation, 11, and give ourselves to others, 12. Beginning at the beginning was the only way into spiritual recovery for us. And if we came from some other 12-step program, many of us had to begin all over again as though we had never heard of the steps. There don't seem to be any shortcuts for us. In summary, for us, surrender is the change in attitude of the inner person that makes life possible. It is the great beginning, the insignia and watchword of our program. And no amount of knowledge about surrender can make it a fact until we simply give up, let go, and let God. When we surrender our freedom, we become truly free.